Hi there, me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble short consultant. So yes, I'm shorn. It hasn't happened in a while. <clears throat> so today, being the 21st, and I'll upload this tomorrow for Wednesday, is 20, 22 months post-stroke. So today, 22 months ago, is when I had my stroke. Um, now, in the last four weeks, I've been able to do something that even six months ago when it would have been a highly um, detrimental, if not disastrous event. <clears throat> I've started working out again um, and I'm starting by walking. I started walking in first two weeks, five kilometers with a 20 pound backpack. And now I'm doing six kilometers with a 30 pound backpack. And on average, I'm keeping under 12 minutes per kilometer so roughly six kilometers will take me today i did it in an hour and nine minutes and change and then once this week is finished the following week i'll go to seven kilometers with 40 pounds and then work up to a point where i get to i cap off the weight but increase the distance <clears throat> now people go well, why are you working out with a backpack what's well one that's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. Well, it does a couple of things. It forces me to work on balance because it throws my center of gravity off. <clears throat> because there's the extra weight, it becomes an endurance and an excellent cardio exercise. Um, it also forces me to work on an even gait and foot placement. So when I start to notice my right foot start to slide, I have to be more cognizant and more... Um, um, Concert, like uh, make make a more concerted effort for proper foot placement and then lifting the foot up and putting it down and then um because of one of the hobbies i have backpacking is involved at times i'm trying to get back into shape as soon as this covid19 situation goes away so we can get out and do things so that way i'm not out of shape and also you know it's just time to try to see if i can do it now one of the big differences is, big, big differences, big differences would be, um, the last time I was trying to go to a gym and do the treadmill, there'd be times that have problems with balance, or I'd feel a little bit nauseous, um, a little bit anxiety. Um, <clears throat> and I, at that point, I was still having significant neurological fatigue. Um, I'm going to say the past three-ish months, that neurological fatigue has gotten better. Uh, it's, it definitely doesn't have the same nature and quality. I have definitely not had the same number of events. They still do happen. So the neurological fatigue in my case has gotten better. Um, do I still have it? Yes. Um, will it ever go away? I don't know. I guess we'll wait and find out. Uh, in March, I went to Toronto, um, for two days for special uh, neurological assessment, uh, neuro a neuropsychological assessment, a two-day assessment. Uh, unlike the one I went to in December, which was a fairly quick and dirty um, affair, <clears throat> which was just a rapid fire appointment after a rapid fire appointment after a rapid fire appointment. Um, this one, I was working with a psychologist. I had a three hour interview. And then the rest of those two days was taken up with working with a psychometrist where he did some tests um, I'll share some of that in another video, kind of what tests they did in my case, but keep in mind everyone's unique in an individual, so they may not do or may involve other tests that weren't done with me. So <clears throat> not everything is a cookie cutter approach per se. So it's 20, 22 months today. There are still some difficulties, so there's not everything is happy, go lucky, cheery and rosy. But the great, great thing about having an anxiety-based disorder, um, I was self-isolating before self-isolation was cool, you know, because this is kind of what I was doing since July in a way. Um, so making, it sort of made doing the COVID-19 stay home thing easier, but not. Um, so... This video probably ended up being shorter than the standard fare, and I will get back to doing Wordy Wednesdays and some other content, uh, just because of the transition with the COVID-19, things aren't sort of running on the same pace. <clears throat> but every day I get up, um, uh, I get out of the house, uh, I go for the walk, I come home, 
the first couple weeks were bad. Not not like detrimental bad, but it, they were difficult. Um, I would come home and it would take me uh, fairly healthy. It took me a, a good part of the first week and part of the second week to get used to doing it and getting up to a stride that felt kind of normal. And now it's getting easier. <clears throat> and then the goal I have is every two weeks to increase either both the weight and the distance or just increase the distance once I get to a weight cap. So the physical activity has gotten easier. The neurological fatigue has gotten lesser. Um, the number of medications I'm on has increased since the two months, or not two months, since the first month. Uh, um, but on the upside, um, because of my stroke, I have PTSD. <clears throat> However, right now I score, if you were to give me a, a, a clinical assessment for PTSD, Right now, I score is not presenting as having PTSD. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a video just about PTSD and stroke because that will be a more involved conversation. Um, not everyone, because of a stroke, may have PTSD, but it is a possibility you could end up with PTSD because of your stroke. Um, because, you know, you almost died. Right? That's a fairly traumatic event. <clears throat> uh, other than that, really, there's not much to report. Um, it's It's been a... The last couple of months, um, they have had their difficulties, but in the last month specifically, because I'm right now on day two, week four of my new workout regime, um, it's it's gotten easier. It's it's I now have more uh, more stamina at times. Uh, my cardio is getting better. Uh, my uh, my pace rate, on average, I'm doing about five kilometers an hour. Uh, my speed per kilometer is coming down, so it, it has been in the 13 minute, you know, high 12 minutes, and now I'm in, in the mid 11 minutes range, so I'm strengthening my pace, I'm quickening my pace, um, the time the times are getting better. Now, I realize that my experience might seem kind of unique. It is, but it isn't. Right? Because every stroke is unique unto itself. Um, I just had this significant benefit of having people watch me go down. Um, I was in a the local or regional neurotrauma center within an hour um, of going down. I was, you know, being treated and, and all that stuff. So I had significantly early and significant rapid intervention to what happened when I had the stroke. Um also, my stroke was ischemic and not hemorrhagic. So there's a lot of factors in play there. And I realize there are people out there that have had a stroke and they're a more senior stroke survivor than I am. And they are still having difficulty moving their hands or difficulty walking or they're paralyzed on one side. And all I can say to that is set your goals and try to be realistic and relevant about your goals because there was a time after my stroke I thought I could do exactly what I'm doing right now and it was a shit show like an absolute unadulterated I'm gonna do this you can't stop me the stroke didn't take me down this is just gonna happen and I was stupid um, uninformed <clears throat> trying to make a very rash decision because I wanted to prove to myself that I could still do it. I appreciate there are some people that will have a stroke that is so disruptive, getting back to what your life used to be like will be very difficult. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can, I can empathize with what that feels like, um, but I will never truly understand what that is like because that's probably not gonna be my experience. Um, but all I can say is set goals that are realistic, set goal, goals that are relevant, um, and then work towards your goals. And whenever you're going to create a new goal, um, do so using the benefits of your clinical team. Involve your neurologist, involve a physiotherapist, involve an occupational therapist, involve your family doctor, involve what other specialist you may need to involve. So you're making a, a, a plan that is designed to complement your strengths, but account for your difficulties. 
because if you try to do something in an unsafe manner, if you try to do something before you have the core abilities to do so, um, such as you still walk with foot drop or you still walk with um, unequal gait or you still walk and have extreme difficulty with balance, trying to do something that involves sense of balance, uh, walking or running could be highly detrimental. Um, you know, even, even if some of the advice you need is from a personal trainer, just to develop some of the core exercises to move on to the goal. So one of the exercises I want to become good at again is running. But so a friend of mine who is a personal trainer said, if you want to get good at running, practice lunges and practice squats, and that'll help build up the muscles you need and, and the sense of balance you need. So when you do start running again, you've got that sense of balance and you've got that, uh, that ability to handle yourself if you get a bit wobbly. But on that note, I'm just going to close the video out. If you happen to like what you're watching, please like, share, subscribe. If you are someone yourself who's going through the uh, recovery and redevelopment after a brain injury, a stroke, or you know someone that is, please point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit, get them to like, share, and subscribe. If you're someone that's supporting someone after they've gone through a stroke or a brain injury, again, please point the channel out to them, get them to like, share, and subscribe. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being someone who appears to me immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance. Someone has vision problems. They can't see it in one eye. They only see in grayscale. Um, they only see the like, little dot in the world. Someone has a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. Someone who can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context, or you have the inability to understand language. Um, someone who has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.